But speaking of Periphery, this album, this is a massive one. Periphery 1. 2010. Yeah, so this record just changed the entire landscape of guitar. Obviously, I keep talking about guitar because it's such an important element to metalcore music, right? Kids are now introduced to gent elements because Periphery basically took Meshuggah's ideas but brought it to a prog metalcore kind of setting, right? Let's continue with the gent sound because obviously gent is such a huge sound in the scene that's still happening today. But Tesseract... The guitar stuff that we hear now is not that different. In the 2000s, we had a more melodic riffage with a lot of string skipping. Then now it's gents. But what's happening now is fall. Fall is the thing that we need. But it's going. It's not going to be that much longer until we get tired of fall. But fall is a much needed breath of fresh air to the guitar sound. All right. Do we have one for 2012? 2012 metalcore records and see what I see here. Converge. We already kind of talked about Converge. Every time I die. Memphis May Fire was commercially successful, but that's like, uh, that might be a decent one to talk about, actually. I think Memphis May Fire might be the more important record here. 2012, like I said, this is when I started dipping interest in like metalcore music and mainly because this is the rise of Risecore. Risecore was just super poppy, basic, kind of generic music, although it introduced a lot of people into metalcore. So that's why it's influential. I just think it also helped not make metalcore relevant. So yeah, I'd say 2012 is not a very eventful year for like the core scene, but 2013, oh my goodness, we had friggin' Bring the Horizon, Step Eternal. Dude, this record is huge. I forgot to talk about Suicide Season. I feel like every Bring the Horizon record is just so influential, man. Arguably like the most influential modern metalcore record. So luckily, Bringing the Rise and helped make metalcore a little bit exciting when it felt like it was kind of like losing interest a little bit. Um, but yeah, this record is still is influential today. It, almost like Linkin Park gone metalcore, right? Fuck. Hot take. I'll give you guys a hot take right now. I think Bringing the Rise and is this generation's Beatles. Although it, not in terms of like sound and tone, obviously, but in terms of influence and being uh, always a step ahead. And also Ollie Sykes looks uncanny like uh, Paul McCartney. They look so identical, it's weird. But yep, North Lane, Singularity. Playing a lot of like uh, gent riffs, but with a lot of metalcore elements. So yeah, North Lane, this record was influential for metalcore for sure. Just gent riffage, big, heavy drops and melodic sections too. Like it is ahead of its time. It's 2013 and it still goes hard today. But another one that's important. Now this is stepping outside of, you know, metalcore music, but the contortionist was a very, very important record for core kids. So they really changed their style with language. I never listened to it. That's probably why it slipped over my head for this list. But no, there's no uh, doubt that Volumes Via is like another genty metalcore record that was very influential. Yeah, see, this is why I'm putting this on this list. Although it's not a metalcore record or even a deathcore or anything or even like a prog metal. Well, it is prog metal, but it's also very prog rock too. Um, this record just kind of showed you know, what bands could do in terms of ambience and softer elements, which I feel like a lot of bands have incorporated the, inc the contortionist kind of style and used it with their metalcore music. So this is a very important record to the scene. That's why a lot of people in the chat here agree too. But yeah, the contortionist language is a huge record. Let's move on to 2015. Guys, what's a big record that came out in 2015? TTS? 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 Yep. Bring me the horizon. That's the spirit. This record is fucking huge. So 
So yeah, just like Sep Eternal, Suicide Season, every record that these guys do is always so ahead of its time where other bands are playing catch up. So that's the spirit. Um, so many bands have dropped the metalcore elements, whether it's bands like The Word Alive or Fit for a Cane and stuff, and started introducing more butt rock. This is where the butt rock stuff comes in. Big chorus is a lot more melodic, but Bring the Horizon just has a knack for it. And I think Ollie just has a knack for songwriting and lyricism, and Jordan Fish is like the secret sauce to help like make this band just evolve into a new exciting way to help like propel them into the mainstream too so drown i remember when this song came out actually and musicians like uh stevie t from fever 333 in the chariot just saying like wow this song is fucking amazing every like all the metalheads were loving this direction because this is after sep eternal then they put drown as a single and this is so different but people just loved it because even when they changed their style they managed to make it fucking work so yeah that's the spirit is a huge important record it's not any kind of core it's more like a hard rock record really but it's fucking great now let's move on to 2016. we have a big record yeah <laughs> you guys know architects man So yeah, this is a huge record because Architects has always had a little bit of an identity crisis with their music. Hollow Crown is my personal favorite, um, but that was more mathcore and then they went post hardcore and then they went to like genty metalcore with um, Lost Forever, Lost Together. But this record, um, this one's a little bit different because obviously everyone knows the news about, you know, with Tom and basically writing this record before his death. And so there's a very strong emotional component to it. And it just, the fact that the band just kind of like hit it under wraps, really, they weren't being vocal about it, even though there was hints with songs like Cancer, right, on their last record. But then to release the record and then like I think three months later is when he passed away then this record just took a whole new form because i remember when i first heard this record i'll be honest i liked it but i liked lost forever lost together a little bit more but then after knowing the context of this record it just hits so much different so much different so this yeah this album is just a strong emotional album also uh, showed a lot of like the metalcore people like Genty music just like what North Lane's doing but with strong emotional um, tones and also with Sam Carter's vocal style with the same scream it is just it's like unlike he was like one of the first ones to do it really and obviously the bleh the bleh is huge too so there's so many things that architects that are doing um, that have helped shape the metalcore scene that we listen to today so let's move on to 2017 now this one I'll be honest I don't know this record but I do know that this was gained some traction. Code Orange with Forever. So yeah, this is chaotic, it's heavy, it's intense. So Code Orange just kind of like came out of nowhere, I feel like, and uh, I knew this record was making some traction. It took me a while to get into their music, but Code Orange, it's bringing back that hardcore elements and also some in, uh, industrial elements too, um, that I feel like was getting a little bit absent with Metalcore. Metalcore was like kind of drifting into Risecore and also Genty music, but Code Orange was able to do the mathcore elements a little bit, um, also bringing a lot of like, again, hardcore elements. So yeah, this album was, still like pretty relevant today too it's not that old 2017 but let's move on to 2018. <laughs> nice. but okay ice nine kills this one is fucking huge um it's not even like my personal favorite but there's no denying that this album got like yeah help get metalcore into like an audience that doesn't necessarily listen to metalcore music and i think a big reason is like kind of like it's campy it's melodic it's very catchy and also the horror movie elements like it just seems like a perfect match a lot of people who are into metal music also like horror movies so like it seems like a no-brainer but another record that was influential i feel like this band just needs to be talked about even though they're relevant in the metalcore crowd but they still haven't gone through like mainstream success hopefully one of these days but silent planet when the end began
Yeah, so I think Silent Planet started getting some traction after Panic Room. I think Panic Room was the song where people were like, whoa, who is this fucking band, right? And then they put out When the End Began, which basically took like the homework core ideas and showing like metalcore bands how to write interesting lyrics again. So Silent Planet, yeah, this record is just still influential because it's taking ideas from like Under Oath, uh, thrice, La Dispute, but in a metalcore setting with guitars that are almost like kind of like sixth a little bit. Like there's a lot of cool ideas, but it's also influencing bands today. So yeah, arguably which Sound Planet record is the most influential or most important. It's hard to say. I'm just going to use this as an example because this song's a fucking banger, okay? Northern Fires is so good. Let's move on to 2019. So yeah, now moving on to 2019. This is another important record. So Knock Loose, they're making some big waves and I still wander so. Yeah, so this band is like extremely important to the scene right now because they're again bringing the hardcore elements into metalcore music, which seemed like it was getting abs in a while. But again, Risecore, Genty Bands, now there's bands like Code Orange, Knock Loose, Gideon, Kublai Khan, right? They're also bridging that gap of hardcore metalcore really well because I feel like the hardcore audience is extremely gatekeepy. Uh, but they'll still go to a knock loose show. And when they do go to a knock loose show, there's probably going to be metalcore bands, right? So I think that's what's special about this band. They're bridging that gap, pulling in both uh, crowds and making this style of music arguably, I would just say successful. I don't know how commercially successful it is, but they're definitely making some big waves. But another extremely important record in 2019 is of course, North Lane Alien. So for North Lane to bridge that gap of like EDM music and metalcore, I think is a very smart direction. Although people are kind of like iffy about Obsidian, but Alien definitely is pulling in the metalcore audience. But where I'm getting at is that I think this is a very smart move to bring in like, yeah, electronic elements that is going to help influence a lot of bands by, you know, playing gent guitars and incorporating EDM. And I think a lot of like Australian metalcore bands are kind of trying to play catch up to North Lane. So they're also kind of like, influenced by this sound too so alien is a very important record yeah you're right that's that's a good one it's a little bit more niche the thing about sleep token is that it's <laughs> no one can like imitate them that's why they're so fucking sick so let's just do the offering because that's their most popular one but another record that definitely is very important is sleep token sundowning i don't know i don't know how to explain this one i feel like their newest record is going to be the more influential one but this is definitely showcasing, you know, the niche metal core audience or just core people, what you could do with this style of music. It's not even really metal core. And that's what makes this band so different. They're kind of bridging the or uh, breaking the conventions of what you can do with this style of music with, with like soft and heavy gent elements. So the offering. Let's move on to 2020. Guys, what record in 2020 is genre defining? Loathe, baby, loathe. Okay, loathe. This record easily came to mind. This is one of the most influential records in metalcore. When I first heard it, it made me fall in love with just metalcore music again because it's not even necessarily just metalcore this is helping redefine what you can do with this style of music it's deaf tones for sure but it's also a bunch of other things mashuga it's got like emo elements like uh, balanced composure like i mentioned before but it's so different the structures the consistency in tone the lyrics the guitar style it, again guitar is so important to this style of music so they're playing baritone guitars with very bassy mix now i'm hearing a lot of bands like this year and even last year that are incorporating a lot of this bassy mix guitars with a lot of shoegazy dreamy reverb like this record is changing the scene so much so much this is one of the most influential records for sure yeah smashing pumpkins 100 percent 100 percent man so yeah 2020 we'll just leave it loathe I let it in and took everything. No competition. 2021, Vilgiarta, Macedon, 
under Vatten. This is the genre defining record, even though, again, it's not really metalcore or deathcore. It's more just progressive death metal, I guess. But Thal is changing the scene, even though they did Thal with their last record, which was like back in 2013, it did feel like it made some waves, but not like what their second record did, Macedon Under Vatten. This record is already changing the guitar soundscape with bands like Alt, Grayscale Season, uh, Atlas, and name a few that are introducing Thal into metalcore music. Vilgiarta is completely changing what you can do with guitar. Spirit Box, yeah, very, very important band to metalcore right now. They're making it a little bit more mainstream and accessible. So yeah, everyone's heard this song a bunch. Um, it's weird how Spirit Box has just been able to blow up so much. I think their music has variety. It's accessible. It can be really heavy like this, or it can be really poppy. Um, but I think having Courtney LaPlante as the vocalist is the reason for this band to just blow up. I think um, there needs to be more like female role models for like girls to be introduced to the scene. So Spirit Box is for sure pulling like a big male demographic, right? Like a lot of us really like it, but they're also pulling a lot of females, which we need in this scene. So I think Spirit Box is doing a lot in that regard, but their music is also just really good. Um, they're not sticking to a certain sound. They're kind of evolving their sound and which even though they haven't been around a band for too long, but yeah, Spirit Box, they're making some big waves, but we're almost done guys we're almost done thank you thank you for sticking around but we're moving on to 2022 so since it's still fresh in our heads what were the genre defining records last year what do you guys think so what i have here is indeed bad omens the death of peace of mind So Bad Omens, The Death of Peace of Mind, everyone knows that this band is just blowing up big time. This record is going to change what you can do with metalcore music by making it a little bit more seductive and uh, almost like R&B style. A lot of people compare it to The Weeknd, but it doesn't necessarily uh, sound like The Weeknd. It's like Brain the Rise and The Weeknd and health and industrial element elements. It's just a weird culmination of ideas. Very poppy, but also it's very, again, seductive. And I think that's what's been missing the scene. So just like Spirit Box, I do think Bad Omens is pulling in a big female demographic too, which we need. So Bad Omens, The Death of Peace of Mind is a very important record. I can see a lot of bands trying to imitate their style, but probably not as well because Noah is such a good vocalist. But yeah, very, very important record. But a lot of you guys are saying another one that is huge. Yep. It goes without saying, Lauren Shore, Pain Remains. This is a big record, man. Yeah, man, Laura Shore, they're a fucking special band. They're needed for this scene. Like, it's something so heavy. And it, it, there's a sound to Laura Shore that's unlike other bands. Like, you know, there's other bands like Mental Cruelty and stuff, but Laura Shore has been able to ma main, uh, find mainstream success with it. And it's funny because, like, To the Hellfire is a song that really got them, like, viral, but that's like an EP, right? So Pain Remains took the ideas from that EP, ran with it. And this record, like a sold out tour and like bands incorporating a lot of like black and symphonic elements with a tons of blast beats and these big symphonic moments and these crushing breakdowns. Every, like there's so many times when I listen to music, I'm like, oh, that just feels like a Lauren Shore thing. Lauren Shore is such an influential band. Now, Electric Cowboy, this band again is making like metalcore music accessible. I actually knew someone, I bumped into um, some people at a wedding that I was at like last year and they were talking about what I do and stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, like I have like a four year old that's like getting into like bands like, uh, do you know Spirit Box? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, of course. Like, oh, and Electric Cowboy. I'm like your four year old likes Electric Cowboy? I was mind blown. But yeah, Electric Cowboy is like introducing a younger demographic and people into metalcore music. <laughs> Right 
Yeah, you know, Obsidian, maybe Enterprise Earth, Darko, maybe. But if we're talking last year, it's definitely the big records, I think, are Electric Callboy, Lauren Shore, and Bad Omens. So I think those are the three most important records that came out last year that helped change the sound. The Chosen, like, again, like those are, I like that record more than the ones I mentioned, but I don't think it's going to be as influential. Yeah, Color Decay. Look, actually, I feel like that's a good one. No, 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 no. We should go back to 2022. You're right. I did not give Del Wars Pro love in this list, but there's no denying Color Decay is a big record, especially uh, for this band who's been around for a long time. I like how they have so many guitars, man. It feels like a little like overkill, but yeah, no, this record, Color Decay, is a very, very important record for the scene. So many people are loving it. And it's, again, it's why it's important is because, like, although it's not, like, metalcore anymore, it's more post-hardcore, it's just showing um, people, like, or musicians how to write music that is emotionally heavy, but still, like, really catchy. But 2023 is the year of Sleep Token. Who knows? I don't know who else is. Maybe Tesseract again? Maybe aviations. Oh, cozy metal might be a thing in 2023. I don't know. Guys, I'm about to piss my pants. Holy shit. I've been live streaming for a while.